Good afternoon. So I'd like to start by talking about healthcare today and in particular access to healthcare today. And last year, the World Health Organization and the World Bank published a report saying that, estimating that at least half the world's population uh, still lacks access to basic essential health services. And in China, it's standard for doctors to have just two minutes um, <laughs> per patient. Uh, and it's, you know, they, they work an, an 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. day, uh, see several hundred patients uh, in that time, just two minutes per patient. And it's not just China. Uh, in India, it's also an average of two minutes per patient. Um, in Pakistan, 1.3 minutes. And in Bangladesh, just 43 seconds. And obviously, this isn't good for patients. Uh, one can only imagine the errors uh, that get made in that rushed a uh, situation. And um, it's also very difficult to establish rapport and trust and a good doctor-patient relationship um, in that situation as well. It's also not good for doctors. Uh, for doctors, it's, it's a stressful situation having to um, sort of rush through appointments so quickly and, and doctors are often very burnt out. Uh, and, and this is uh, how the system works in China. So th there's, there's not much in the way of a primary care system. So patients turn up to the state hospital and they, they queue to register uh, for an appointment and then they queue uh, to see the doctor and then they queue to pay for the prescription uh, and then queue to receive the prescription. Um, and that can be hours of queuing for just two minutes with the doctor. Uh, and, and actually, our own NHS here in the UK is also very strained. Um, it's, uh, th there have been countless reports this winter of uh, 50, 60 people at a time waiting for beds in the A&E. Um, uh, and a lot of reports of um, 80, sometimes even over 100 people waiting in the corridors of some of our hospitals. Um, with consultants apologising for those conditions and pe people dying prematurely in the corridor. So I was talking with somebody who's a non-executive director at uh, a UK hospital and she said just earlier this year there were 80 patients lined up in the corridor all at, all at one time um, and, and one gentleman, his oxygen ran out and no one had noticed, so he died. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty horrifying, really. Um, and, you know, we have a shortage of doctors around the world. Unfortunately, the, and, and it's uh, to the order of millions, uh, and other health workers too. And that shortage is not shrinking, it's actually growing. Um, doctors are expensive to train, uh, they take a long time to train, and um, uh, they, they're also sort of very often burnt out these days, uh, retiring early here in the UK. I talk to a lot of GPs who say a full-time a uh, job as a GP in the NHS is unsustainable, so they have portfolio careers and only spend pa part of the week working as a GP. Um, and, and, and many more doctors these days are leaving, um, uh, are looking for alternative paths uh, after they graduate be because of the, um, the stress that they're under. And so, uh, if that's the situation, if we, if we want to deliver high quality healthcare for everyone, for all, um, and, and not just the few, and we aren't about to have millions more doctors anytime soon, um, maybe there's a role for technology and AI. Um, I, I guess you will all have seen many of these headlines again and again. I mean, it's really uh, a daily phenomenon now that there are headlines about AI and healthcare. Um, I would not say that it's a cure for all, of course, uh, and there are many things that uh, we, we, we still need doctors for. There's a, there's a lot of doctors who worry about, will, will, will we lose our jobs? You know, will AI take over? I think, honestly, we've, we, we've just some of the things that I've been talking about um, illustrate how uh, we, we have a huge need for better access, um, and, and maybe it's more about enabling doctors to do more with less. Um, to, to use their time more efficiently and also to move away from a very doctor-centric 
uh, health uh, approach to healthcare uh, to one where people can actually take more control and some of those more basic things can be done using technology and not always needing to see the doctor. So I wanted to tell you a bit about Ada. Um, so this is me with my two co-founders, um, Daniel and Martin. So Daniel's a lawyer by background and the business guy. Martin's a scientist um, and I'm a, I'm a doctor. So I worked for several years in the NHS as a hospital doctor, a paediatrician and a geneticist. <coughs> and when, when I met Daniel and Martin, I was at this place in Cambridge. Um, I'd taken some, some time out of clinical practice to do a PhD. And while I was there, I got very interested in startups and, and I was working on my own idea, actually. Um, and I was introduced, I went to Berlin to speak at a conference and I was introduced to Daniel and Martin. They were working on something uh, in a similar space. And after a few conversations, we, we decided to team up, um, join forces. We thought maybe we'll be more successful working on this problem together. Uh, and what we, what, what we were working on was decision support for doctors, so diagnosis support for doctors. And as a geneticist, I had actually used technology and tools to help me with diagnosis on a daily basis, to be honest. So in genetics, uh, you're dealing with some of the rarest and most complex diagnoses, um, and doctors in that specialty recognise they, they can't know it all and they can't do it all without help. So every few months we'd meet up with all the other geneticists in the country to share our difficult cases and we'd also use a lot of technology to help with that. So it was something that I had um, I'd, I'd seen every day in my practice. I was working on a case sharing platform for doctors and Daniel and Martin had started looking at how to actually automate this. And so we built a probabilistic um, reasoning engine and a huge knowledge base. Uh, we started with specialists um, in areas such as vertigo, um, we had doctors in Germany, um, which is where our headquarters is, using that system, especially for the juniors to get up to speed more quickly so that juniors could practice at a level of a more experienced doctor in those specialties. Um, but we realised that we were going to have much more impact if we went earlier down the sort of patient diagnosis journey because most of the misdiagnoses, most of the delays in diagnosis happen much earlier on um, with the GP um, or, or even earlier. And so we, we built out the system, we increased the knowledge base and, and we built it out for GPs and we started working with GPs in the UK and Germany. And then we also built out a pre-assessment um, uh, sort of platform where patients could actually answer a lot of questions in advance of a consultation because we've talked about how uh, stretched doctors are, how little time they have with each patient. They don't really have time to enter all this information uh, during a consultation. If a lot of it can be gathered from a patient before a consultation, that's uh, very helpful for them. Um, so this is two years ago, this photo was taken. So we've been building this for a few years. We've been working with doctors. Um, our, our team started growing quite significantly. It's now about double that size. And um, a few months after that photo was taken, we launched um, an app uh, for patients um, in the App Store, on the Google Play Store. Uh, it's free to use. You can download it. Um, and, and it's a personal health guide. So. Uh, you tell Ada what's going on, what's bothering you, and then have uh, a conversation with Ada back and forth like you would with a, a doctor. Ada asks questions, it's dynamic, constantly weighing up what might be going on here, what, what might be the most useful question to ask now. And then Ada provides information about what might be going on and appropriate next steps. Um, and so I think there's a little screen car so you can see how it works. So who here has watched the Disney movie Big Hero 6? <laughs> Quite a few people. So I have a, 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 sh a short clip for those who haven't seen it. Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. 
I was alerted to the need for medical attention when you said, Ow. A robotic nurse. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your pain? Physical or emotional? I will scan you now. Scan complete. You have a slight epidermal abrasion on your forearm. I suggest an antibacterial spray. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's in the spray specifically? The primary ingredient is bacitracin. It's a bummer. I'm actually allergic to that. You are not allergic to bacitracin. You do have a mild allergy to peanuts. Hmm, not bad. You've done some serious coding on this thing, huh? So I hadn't heard of that film until about a year ago when we started getting all kinds of uh, lots and lots of user reviews in the App Store. Uh, I finally found my Baymax, my personal Baymax. Um, so obviously we can't do everything, Ada can't do everything right now that <laughs> Baymax can do. Um, but, uh, but you get the idea. And, 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 and we have a lot of users asking us to give Ada a voice. So rather than typing everything into Ada, can I talk to Ada? So we have given Ada a voice um, through Alexa. And so I'll just quickly show you that. Alexa, open Ada. Hi, I am Ada. I can help if you're feeling unwell. Please name the symptom that's troubling you the most. I've been having dizzy spells. OK, dizziness. How long has this been troubling you? A few days. Less than one week. How does making sudden head movements affect your dizziness? It gets worse. Okay, worsens. Are you having difficulty keeping your balance? Yes. Do you have nausea? Yes. Does your ear feel full? No. Do you have reduced, distorted or blurred vision? No. Do you hear a buzzing, humming or ringing sound in your ear? No. Thank you. I'm now ready to create your report. Six out of ten people with these symptoms have benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. It might require medical attention. If you wish to, you can send this assessment along with a question and receive free advice from one of our Ada doctors. Would you like to do that? Yes, please. Okay, that's done. One of our doctors will be in touch soon. Bye for now, and get well soon. Thank you, Ada. Um, and so actually now one of our advisors and investors in the company um, is a friend of mine from my days in Cambridge, William Tunstall Pedo. And, and he um, was the founder of a company called Evie um, that built the technology that was acquired by Amazon and became Alexa. So uh, you know, he's, he's got lots of uh, fantastic insights and it's great to have him on board. Um, and this is, this is some of the uh, feedback that we, um, every day we get hundreds and hundreds of written reviews. Um, we get a lot of people telling us that uh, Ada provides them with peace of mind. Um, you know, we know that everybody's Googling their symptoms these days, but what you find is it's not personalized and it's uh, not necessarily always reliable articles that you find. So Ada is like the sort of next step on from that. Um, uh, more personalized, um, built by doctors. And uh, we also, although uh, we're very clear when you use the app, it's very clear that Ada is not replacing your doctor. This is not a medical diagnosis, it's just information about what might be causing your symptoms and that you should always speak to a doctor for a diagnosis. Uh, we, we do get quite a lot of feedback um, that actually when a doc the, the doctor didn't get it right and Ada, Ada did get it uh, right, um, sometimes people take the report into their GP and ask actually, uh, you, you, you thought it was something else but could you take a look at what Ada is suggesting, do you think it might be this and, 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 and very often um, consultations are shortened uh, by people providing all the information in advance, showing the doctor the ADA assessment, um, <coughs> and uh, e even um, diagnoses rev revised by the doctor after, after the ADA assessment is shown to them by the patient. And I was talking with a, a doctor I know a few days ago, and she told me that a family member of hers um, went to 
see the GP with acute abdominal pain, the GP diagnosed appendicitis, um, although Ada said it was probably diverticulitis and when the person turned up, when her relative turned up, uh, the hospital diverticulitis was confirmed. So we, we, we aren't trying to replace doctors, but we, uh, we, we are interestingly at a point now where, um, while I wouldn't say it's always the case, um, Often Ada is actually supporting the consultation, helping people to, um, uh, to, to spot what might be going on when maybe the doctor missed it, which is, which is quite an interesting um, point to be at. And I think, you know, I always say, you know, doctors can't know everything. Um, and, and we saw how rushed for time they are. Um, humans are noisy, so they make a lot of, and, and biased, you know, humans are noisy and biased. So what I mean by that is um, very often uh, when, uh, if, if you ask a pathologist, so, so there's a lot of evidence, if you ask a pathologist on one day uh, what, what, what a uh, slide is showing and they'll give you one diagnosis, if you ask them the next day, Quite, quite often, uh, you know, it'll be something different. You know, you ask the same doctor on two different days for a diagnosis. So, so now at Ada, we have more than um, two million users. Uh, we have more than three million assessments performed, and uh, we have a new Ada assessment uh, performed every four seconds somewhere in the world. So, somewhere in the world, every four seconds, somebody uh, completes a new Ada assessment. Uh, so it's obviously really early days for us. Um, we're, we're growing fast, but it's very early days. Uh, the next steps for us are that we're starting to make Ada more personalised. Uh, so um, using data from a wide range of sources, sensors, um, uh, making it a much more personalised assessment and also uh, tracking people's symptoms over time uh, so that Ada can kind of get to know the person and, um, and, and, and use past assessments and all the knowledge about your medical, past medical history uh, to, to, to provide a more accurate assessment and ongoing suggestions um, and risk assessment. Um, and we're also starting to connect people with next steps. So here in the UK, you can connect with a doctor at the end of an assessment. So share your assessment with a doctor and uh, then continue the conversation with a doctor. But we're also connecting people with a wide range of next steps. So with partner organizations, helping people to navigate the most appropriate next steps. <coughs> uh, so, so thanks very much. <laughs> thanks, Claire.